My name is John Beatty, and I'm an assistant research professor in the materials science department, and I'm also a program scientist in this department here, conservation and preservation, within the Sheridan libraries and museums. And I'm just going to start us off with some context of our materials science research program um, within this uh, department and within the new and exciting field of heritage science. And then our presenter is hiding for the day, Joseline Alcantara Garcia who is our latest Andrew W. Mellon postdoctoral research fellow. And then hopefully we will have about 20 minutes or so for Q&A in the end of the hour. So an action-packed uh, action day. So we're going to be talking about uh, a slightly different sort of material today from which uh, you may be speaking uh, normally, heritage materials. And here, the material components of the artifacts with which we're interested in this laboratory, books, maps, manuscripts, works of art on paper. How can you get interested in such uh, a material? And once interested, how can you get a job that satisfies that interest? Um, I think there are a couple of ways. One is to gain an appreciation for uh, how good some of these materials are at, at communicating the artistic expression um, the historic communication across physical boundaries and across time. I don't know if anyone caught a lecture that I gave, three o'clock lecture I gave to the material science department a couple weeks ago. At that time, I um, shared a personal experience at uh, Special Collections in the University of Iowa where I was looking at a 500-year-old European book, much like this one right here. Uh, it's called an incunabula, an early printed book where the black text was printed, but the, uh, the capitals and the paragraph markings were added in red, or at least they were for the first two-thirds of the book, but it was in such pristine condition that you thought the next shift could just come and carry where they, where they left off. Um, this paper is a 400-year-old uh, book, uh, book paper, so not quite as old. And it has not been printed on, but it looks like it is ready to undergo that process of printing. And you can pass this around. Just keep it in the folder and pass it from chair to chair in the folder. You may touch this. The conservators will tell you what the rules are for the other materials. But this one uh, belongs to a colleague of mine, and you can feel free to touch that. This is an East Asian paper, which is of uh, contemporary manufacture, but um, manufactured by traditional means. And it is extremely delicate in appearance, but yet extremely strong and likely to last many hundreds of years if it's well cared for. You pass that around. Contrast that to this book right here, which is uh, was withdrawn from this library, the Sheridan Libraries, the Milton S. Eisenhower Library, because it has failed in keeping the pages inside. And uh, those that have not come apart already, they are detaching. And it cannot endure a single fold without uh, breaking. And it's crumbling really into dust. So I would say that one way to get interested in, um, in cultural heritage materials is to gain an appreciation for how good they can be on one hand and, and also um, the often unexpected, uh, sometimes even heartbreaking problems that they can, uh, that they can be subject to. Now, this uh, interest, this endeavor to preserve those properties of these cultural, material, cultural heritage materials that we value for this generation, for future generation, has a name, and it's called conservation. And I am not a conservator. I'm a materials scientist. And it's been the case that I've had to say a few words to introduce conservation before. And what it enables me, uh, as an outsider, is to be over the top in my appreciation for what these individuals are um, are able to do. It is, I've described it before, as uh, an in, a book and paper conservation uh, as an inventive craft. And among the things that these conservators are able to do, sometimes what needs to be done is pretty straightforward, but 
there is a need for inventiveness and practice skill in execution. And that includes how do you remove surface dirt? How do you flatten uh, rolled or creased materials? What if they're brittle? How do you mend tears with permanent materials and uh, largely invisible materials? One thing that's also extremely vexing, it turns out, how do you remove pressure adhesive tape? Where you are sitting now is in our book conservation laboratory. And book conservation involves an intimate knowledge of the tradition, the materials of, uh, of book binding. I said an inventive craft. I can just give you, I, we just have time for two specific examples of, of uh, book and paper conservation that I find to be really exciting. The first is paper splitting. Not in the x, y dimension, that would be cutting or tearing, but actually in the z dimension to produce two plies with the objective of reinforcing the paper by adding a sheet in between and then adhering that down. That would give the paper some strength. And I don't have something to hand out right now, but here's some visual proof. Here's eight sections of the Wall Street Journal, eight cross sections and six sections of the sheet from, sheet from Life magazine. And just so not to leave you hanging on how this is done um, in conservation, you take an, a reversible adhesive and glue a, often an, a non-woven fabric uh, to both sides of the sheet. And you, you have to have some means of keeping this in registration, and then you can, under humidity, pull that sheet apart. You insert your reinforcing sheet at this time, adhere it with an adhesive that is not reversible under the same circumstances as the adhesive you used uh, to the reinforcing material in order to pull that off. Only one more conservation technique that I'm uh, able to present to you, a conservation technique that is done here called leaf casting. We've talked about what do you do when you've got tears, uh, what an example of what you can do when you've got paper that's brittle. What do you do when you have whole voids? The conservators here are actually to make, able to make paper within paper, paper that is of the same color and thickness and properties, and they use a sink in which they pull the paper fibers down into the sheet selectively. And here is a whole book that has been leaf cast. They have to do this um, page by page. And here is a letter uh, from Marilyn Monroe to Ely Kazan that was leaf cast. She says, don't call me, we're through. You can tell why they didn't uh, care for that. Ely Kazan didn't care for that letter very well. And I'm through, too, with conservation for now. So um, if I'm not a conservator, what am I? And what is Jocelyn? Well, uh, no earlier than 2006, I think there was a shared thought uh, that the individuals, it's a recognition of what had already happened, but individuals who were drawing on often advanced degrees in, in physical sciences and engineering um, could be recognized as a field, let's say, heritage scientists. And I think it's intuitive that such an individual is able to uh, speak to a, a number of individuals, other groups who are concerned with cultural heritage objects. Um, for example, someone who specializes in metals would have something to say, you know, both to conservators and curators. And um, it was a way of sort of consolidating uh, a number of expertise, expertises and having them sort of swap notes. This right here is the lively, this describes the lively field of um, technical art history and archaeometry. And right here, one of the, uh, is, is perhaps the field that I've been working in, uh, conservation science, the collaboration between physical scientists and conservators. And that's very much my personal experience. So after getting a uh, a chemistry degree in an undergraduate school. I eventually went on in a materials uh, school, Manchester, UK, to get a, a PhD where my thesis was on uh, the conservation science of book and paper. 
I've got some additional academic experience, so I did some pre-doctoral work at the University of Iowa, post-doctoral work at um, JHU before I took a faculty position here. And really rounding out this experience for me was to get uh, experience in the private sector, mostly dealing with photographs in this case, but cultural heritage materials, uh, and also in government. So if you're interested in this field, uh, there is funding available in it. And the, uh, largely from the private sector, although the National Endowment for the Humanities is represented here, represented here, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation being perhaps foremost among the private funders. These groups were mostly concerned with this relationship here, getting the heritage scientists located mostly within museums and, and collaborating with the uh, cultural heritage uh, individuals on site. And more recently, the National Science Foundation has gotten involved in this, and they have adopted the same terminology, heritage science, and they're doing a very complementary, uh, a, a, a different but complementary thing. They're making sure that the relationship between the physical scientists in academia, for example, are, is, is very strong with the material scientists in the heritage scientists' correction in the uh, museums and libraries that they're drawing on all those resources, that they're not just becoming analysts um, in isolation. And we are called Heritage Science for Conservation, and we're funded by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and we are engaged in answering or addressing the most challenging questions in book and paper conservation. There are three phases really to our work. We're doing original research into uh, the degradation of materials. We're doing original uh, research into uh, conservation technologies. In a second phase, we're doing, yes, analysis, but increasingly non-destructive analysis, being able to answer more of conservators' questions, uh, more safely to artifacts. And I would say that those two things that we're doing are uh, not uh, really unique to us, but in a third and final phase, I would describe our competitive edge, and that is that we're able to produce information, products, and processes of demonstrated use on the conservator's bench. How are we able to do that? Um, well, we're able to do that based on this emotional proximity that is evident in this photograph here and the physical proximity in this beautiful lab that you see. Uh, the we're going to tour this lab at the end of the hour, but the conservators are represented by the hearts here, the scientists by the, the, the atoms. And that's one aspect of our programmatic success. So I turn the podium over to uh, Jocelyn Alcantara Garcia, who is doing the best kind of cultural heritage science. She brings a conservation technician's experience, widespread technical analysis of the very artifacts which she is now currently researching, and she's got her PhD in inorganic chemistry to power that research. So, Jocelyn.